Hello friends. We're taking questions in the kitchen today. I have a question from Insta and it was about navigating the fretboard, more confidently navigating the fretboard. The guitar is accessible in one way and that you can play. Thousands of songs in the farmer's corner and it, it's all very like accessible for us. But the layout is pretty tough. Um, understanding how the shapes move and all these different permutations of the shape, very, very tricky to, to get a hold of and it, and it can take a while, but there are some tricks, let's say, to make that more accessible. If we start with the dry stuff first, right? Like knowing the, the notes on the fretboard cold, you have to know the musical alphabet, right? Along one string and that's, that's helpful for us. However, painfully slow it may be to count up to a note. You know the names of the strings? E, A, D, G, B, E. Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. As good a mnemonic device as any for that. And then you would understand that the 12th fret would be your octave. So that you would understand where you're starting and ending within that octave. You can figure out or deduce what, are, what notes are on either side of say your E string, octave of your E string here, F or E flat, D sharp. So that's one thing, just to get into it. Seeing these dots I find to be helpful and helpful for students of mine. So if you understand that your third, fifth, seventh dot on your low E, A, and D string, you could think G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Assuming you're not playing here and you're moving around with power chords or bar chords or movable seventh chords, it's probably gonna be a sixth or a fifth string root. 99% of the time, right? I don't know how many four string bar chords, maybe. Woohoo! Okay, so that song, but you've got that one, right? Anyway, you can figure out the root notes by memorizing what, what notes are on your third, fifth, and seventh fret. So if you think G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's, that's pretty accessible. Then you know what's on either side of all those notes here. And that's a decent amount of real estate on the fretboard. Think about why you would need to need, need to know any notes. You're probably looking at a piece of music or a chord chart or something. Then you're like, how do I play these? How do I play, you know, B flat if that's not an open chord? Well, you know, this is A, so you know that's B flat. Boom. And again, just to keep it moving along, guitar mollets, get out method. The out method. Up 12, down five. One way to conceptualize an octave, like if this is low E and this is an octave above that, 12 half steps to an octave. You could think of it like a watch or like a, like a clock. You have 12 hours between AM and PM, 12 hours and it comes around to where it was before. So here's an E, up 12 frets is an octave. Down five is a unison and you get comfy with that sort of relationship, seeing it and hitting that. From here, down five again, you have another unison. Observe that difference in timbre. Up 12, you've run out of space, can't go down five from here, because you'd be like, down there. Up 12 is another octave. You can start to observe these octave shapes. Down five, unison. Here, it gets wacky, down four frets. And that is a little insight into the inconsistency of the tuning on the guitar that leads to all these different confusing shapes for the same thing. Um, for instance, if you notice an A chord and a D chord, it's really the same voicing, but the note that falls, if you just move it across that B string has to go up a half step. So from here, four frets, then five again, unison, octave. One of the most important shapes to learn on the guitar would be this one that we observed here. Why is that important? Well, just in music in general, the, the octave concept is what everything's based on, right? Referred to as the basic miracle of music, the octave. Um, and any kind of tension and resolution is going to be defined by its relationship to the octave, either resolving to the octave or resolving to some chord tone 
that is you know, defined and based off of the octave, or avoiding those chord tones um, and, and, and observing a little dissonance because of its relationship to the octave. So you want to understand that, understand music theory, and then you want to hear it and see how it, that applies to the fretboard. So seeing the octave shape and how that moves is another really good way to see things more clearly and thus navigate the fretboard more, more uh, freely, right? So if we look at this octave shape, and then we move it across our string sets, the same, and then, changes because of the B string and again really should have tuned before I did this. The other octave shape would be those definitely will make your life easier. When you learn songs just sort of file that stuff so say and that's another way to memorize the notes on the fretboard so if you know it smells like teen spirit right remember that your teacher wrote or that you looked up online and it said F. Okay, now you know that's F forever after and B flat and A flat and D flat. Relate all these new concepts or in this case relate no, memorizing the notes on the fretboard cold to, um, to songs you've learned or knowing your open chords, right? You know this is G, so you know that's a G. You know this is C, that is a C. You know this is F. So you know it's a... Ah, oh, the 80s. We can come up with methods to practice that, but that's like knowing the notes cold, the dry stuff. So navigating the, the note, the fretboard, confidently navigating the fretboard, there, there are like two elements there, right? One of which is the confusing guitar layout, and the other is the musical context. If you're playing the guitar, you're playing harmony or melody, right? Assuming it's not some like experimental noise, rock. Assuming it's not that kind of thing. You want to understand how to navigate your fretboard along the string sets, across the string sets, and then you put that together and you get diagonally. So, it's a lot, and then you, you have the tuning of fourths with a third there, and a fourth again. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to say that, but if someone doesn't get it, then they don't get it, and you have to, um, you can't just like tell people that it, if they don't know it, then that's almost useless information. You have to sort of give them exercises and, and point that out in the wild, right? But an example of a warm up, right? An example of a warm up that would give you the harmonic, melodic, musical context through the prism of the guitar layout. So through this like G, B string, light refracting prism, how it shifts everything. So along, across, diagonally for, you know, anything that you would play, which is chords and, um, and scales, harmony, melody. So let's talk about, you know, a, an essential warm up here. What you might do is choose a key, okay. Let's do the key of C. Up 12 is C. Down five. Down five. Down five. Down four, because the B string is wacky. Up 12. Down five. Up 12. And that's all your C's. So what we're doing now is we're kind of in, getting used to and, and uh, conditioning ourselves to have a certain um, reaction or thought process when you approach a song. When you go to sit in with people or you go to write a song with someone, you want to like have this checklist in your mind, right? What's the key? Is it major or minor? What's the chord progression? Is the chord progression diatonic or not? And then where would that stuff be on the guitar? So key of C, let's play a C major scale. Along. Let's play one across the string sets. Let's play our triads across. Oh, that's a long. Let's play our triads across. Now that's cool. A across is a good way to visualize the fretboard and, and to see how these 
invert, and an inversion would be defined as your lowest note going up an octave. And that continues until you get back to where you started. That's nice and all, but one peculiar thing about the guitar is that the way to visualize it that kind of makes sense is not the most practical way to play it. Thank you very much. So the most practical way to play that, the way that you would probably use it, would be along your string sets. You would navigate in this way. So if we relate these, here's. And that would be a basic warm up. You've got your scale along, your scale across, and your triads across and along. Um, it's not quite as like symmetrical as, as you might think, but um, in terms of doing it along, across, along, across, because this access point is less accessible than this one. So you have to kind of make it work, um, which is the importance of having a good teacher, I think, someone who can see like where you're at. I hate that expression, where you're at. And understand where you want to go and, and what you need to get there. And all the while, like keeping it enjoyable, right? It's got to be the right balance of like eating your veggies and, and getting your sweets. If it's all sweets, like you're unhealthy and your teeth run out of your fucking head. But if it's all fibrous vegetables, whew, you know what happens then, you know. And no one wants to hang out with you. Anyway, um, so that would be like your basic warm up, and you would do that relatively quickly and with a metronome um, when you practice. It doesn't take that long. So, again, if I'm to do it pretty quickly, that would be like a, a basic warm up. Um, another one would be like senior octave shapes that would be maybe pushing that a bit. So really useful. Another thing that you can do to incorporate the up 12 down five sort of idea, um, maybe play your major scale and see it there. Okay, that's the same because the tuning is the same up 12. Same. Then it changes because the notes that fall on the B string are going to shift up a half step. Similarly here, the shape changes. So that would be another way to push yourself. Um, another thing as this might, your warm up might evolve, right? You're not gonna do the same thing. It has to serve your progress and um, you know, for, force your evolution. But another thing that you might do would be play all the diatonic chords in a key so that you could see them. And when you're like jamming with people and you see the chord progression being, you know, one, five, six, four, or whatever, you know where that is in different places on the neck, low, middle, high. And you're gonna want to, you know, use low, middle, high based on what key you're in and what everyone else is doing. So for instance, in C, you might see uh, all your chords in that key like this. Then you run out of space. Or I could play them like this. Those are just triads um, or uh, bar chords. Um, so we run out of space here, but what if we play it from here? That works. Or here. I've seen all that stuff, it takes a while to get there, but your triads are absolutely worth the, um, the pain, you know what I mean? It's definitely worth, worth it to, to like persevere and push through and, and get all this down cold. So across, along, major, and then that brings us to minor. So major is only one tonality. You have major, you have minor, those are your basic tonalities, but augmented and diminished, comparatively speaking, not played that much. So you would want to do all the minor stuff as well. So for the minor, let's see the relative major, relate one thing to the next, right? A good access point, 
the preferred access point for a lot of this stuff is relating something new to something with which you're already familiar. So if we're in the key of C major, play the relative minor of A minor, which would be sixth degree, the relative minor, another mnemonic device for you, six syllables. We find the relative minor by going to the sixth degree. One, two, three, four, five, six. C, D, E, F, G, A. Octave shape A. And that would be the scale. Whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole, or. Okay. And that would be along, across, and A minor, your triads across and along in A minor. And similarly, if you wanted to play all the chords in A minor, you could do it in, it in the ways in which we did it in the key of C. So if you're a bar chord, you want to play bar chords. Not really a bar chord. Again, like, you're not going to play a bar chord up there. So what, what would you do? Maybe that just isolate this string set. Or here. Uh, Or here. Mm, that's gonna be a bit much, I guess. I'm running out of space again, of course. So that running out of space on more than one occasion that illustrates why you want to have your inversions down so you can choose where it makes sense to play it. If I'm playing in the key of D flat, um, like this, that's kind of a bit of a stretch, but this one's nice and that one works. And the more you play this stuff, in different keys and you practice it and you do like a warm-up review of it in different keys you just get a sense of you get an intuitive sense of where you'd play you know and pick a chord name g flat not pick a different one f you know it like where you would where you would play some of those um, so you want to understand the basic music theory like major keys scales, triads, minor keys, scales, triads, on the guitar. So across, along, and then ultimately diagonally, if you like. Beyond that, it would be like, what do you, what are your short, medium, long-term goals? You know, what do you want to do? A short-term goal might be learning three songs and that you love to listen to, and then observing and see, seeing what you like, analyzing what you like about those songs and, and stealing it, basically. So transcribing the song, seeing the, the elements of it you like, um, analyzing that, looking at it, and, and transposing it to a different key is great. A, a medium-term goal might be like getting all of the warm-up material down cold and then pushing it to, to like different uh, levels of sophistication, of which there are many. And beyond that, like long-term goal, maybe your gig in six months where you play an open mic or like have a show, you're, your playing is, is like visibly more complete and you're, you're navigating the fretboard more fluently and, and effortlessly. It takes a long time. Um, it can take, a, yeah, it takes a long time, definitely. But um, you, can, you can make that incremental progress consistently. And one thing I read this morning, it's like the time's gonna pass anyway, right? Other ways of navigating the fretboard, that's just like the bare bones of the, the notes on the fretboard and your sort of warm-up review that's going to give you the relevant information. Um, other ways to navigate the fretboard, you want to know low, middle, high, certainly. So if you have a riff, try and play the riff from like different places. If you're an A, or And that's a low, middle, high, and then up on that adjacent string set. Really depends on like what you want to do and like where you're coming from. It's hard to just it's kind of one discrepancy with that's one discrepancy with YouTube and like teaching online without interacting with someone and seeing where their interests lie and and what they're sort of naturally good at and where they want to go and giving them what they need to get where they want to go because any of this stuff can go in 
a number of different directions, you know, can like splinter and fractal out into different approaches to this, but one or, or another will resonate more with you. So try and go to like that root of re least resistance there. Another thing that really helps would be to like break, break out of the box. It's a common thing. So if you know, let's say A minor pentatonic, if you know that, but you don't want to be stuck in the box and you're just either here or here, um, to change the way that you're practicing those and play along your string sets. So like this. across each of the string sets. So one thing you might do, um, if I had a metronome here, would be to sort of blend, if here's your ultimate solo is the goal and you want, you're practicing it right here and you want to work towards that goal, sort of bring these together. And so well, usually it's just like improv technique practice, but bring them together in a sense. Have a metronome on and just improvise eighth note patterns, not just, but improvise And if you get stuck, uh-oh, not really comfortable in this territory, milk it a little bit. So lots of different ways to do it, but ultimately you want to know the notes on your fretboard cold. You want to have a couple tricks to figure that out, like G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And that's gonna give you a lot of real estate. Up 12, down five, knowing your octave shapes, then practically understanding like music context. Uh, what key is it? Is it major or minor? What's the chord progression? Is the chord progression diatonic? Um, understanding the guitar along, across, diagonally. We didn't really get into diagonally, but it's a combination of the two. If this is along, this across. Run out of space, but. And then do this warm up so that you're reinforcing all of that information, your scales and triads, in the different ways in which you're going to use them along the cross diagonally. Um, and then beyond that, just like repertoire stuff, you know, learn a bunch of songs and see what they do and, and just observe how your favorite guitarists are playing. You have this whole neck, right? But a lot of your great blues rock guitarists are not playing every single pentatonic. I have to drop my pick. I need that Gorilla Snot. Have you ever seen Gorilla Snot in like a, in one of those guitar magazines? No, my, like catalogs, like Sweetwater or something. It's like a, a glue that you put on your fingers. I've never used it, but I always thought the cartoon was really cool. Gorilla with like this green snot on it, and then they want you to like put it on your finger. Anyway, what we're talking about? We're talking about, right, the blues rock thing. So a lot of what they're playing is not just here, <laughs> but it's here. So they, that's a very particular way to navigate three positions or more. Um, but if you think about it in that way, it's so much less to think about than this whole neck, five positions, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, five, four. Um, that's a lot to think about. And if you just think about it in these boxy patterns, right, like box positions that people refer to, um, it doesn't really tell the whole story. So a lot of people, times people will like learn these box positions and then they have to break out of them because they only learn your stuff across, which is why having some improvisational element to your practice when you're doing this sort of like navigating technique stuff, that kind of thing, forcing yourself to go to that next place with which you may not be that familiar. That's a good exercise for most people. Again, it's it's not easy to, without like looking at where someone is, but have fun with it. Learn songs you like, come up with short, medium, long-term goals and systems through which you can realize those goals. <laughs>